So you just picked up the Sony a7C and you're wondering, what are the best camera settings for this camera? Well, today I'm gonna give you my settings for the Sony a7C. So if you're looking for the best settings, you've come to the right place. And let's go ahead, jump into the camera and get those settings for you. All right, let's go ahead, turn that to the manual dial and let's get started. First things first, I shoot everything in RAW. RAW is gonna give you the best dynamic range out of this camera, so RAW is the way to go. If you want, you can always do RAW plus JPEG, or you could do JPEG. So JPEG is gonna give you great images straight out of the camera, but I prefer to shoot RAW. I like to do a little bit of editing, gives you a little bit more flexibility in post. Everything I shoot is uncompressed RAW. Now you can shoot compressed RAW if you really want to. That's really gonna shrink up your file size, but it's not gonna give you the full capabilities of RAW. So let's go ahead, pick uncompressed RAW. Next, if you are shooting JPEGs, you wanna go ahead and pick extra fine. You are gonna be saving some space with the JPEGs. Go ahead, pick extra fine. It's still gonna give you a smaller file size than if you shoot raw, but if you need it, this will give you a little extra quality. There's also fine and standard, but like I said, I usually pick extra fine. JPEG size, so you can pick a couple different sizes. You can do the 24 megapixel, that's gonna give you the full readout of the sensor, or you can go with a medium, which is gonna be 10 megapixels, or you can go down to small, that's gonna give you six. I prefer to stay in 24 megapixels. I find that to give you the best quality if you are gonna shoot JPEG. If you're shooting raw, this is not gonna matter. Go ahead and pick large and we'll get rolling. Aspect ratio, three by two is what you wanna be shooting all your photos in. When you're shooting raw, it's gonna give you the three by two aspect ratio anyway. What I like to do is when I'm shooting my thumbnails, I do like to go to the 16 by nine so I can frame up my shot a little bit better. If you are looking to do that square format, you got the one-to-one -one, or if you are looking to shoot stills for Instagram, you can always go to the four by three aspect ratio. I like to keep it on the three by two. It gives you the full real estate of the screen. Super 35 mode. This is mostly for if you wanna go ahead and punch in and use the APS-C mode of your camera. This also allows you to do super 35 millimeter for your videos. So next up we have APS-C mode or super 35 millimeter. I usually leave this on auto. You can go ahead and turn this on or off. I just leave it in auto. Now this is gonna allow you to crop in at 1.5 times. It is gonna shrink up your megapixels. I believe with the Sony a7C, it drops from 24 megapixels down to around 10. Now in video mode, you are gonna still get that 6K down to 4K, and you're still gonna get some excellent image quality, and it will automatically detect if you are using an APS-C camera lens. So now if you're like me, I still have the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. Now that lens is fantastic. Throw that lens here onto the Sony a7C and it is going to give you that APS-C mode automatically. You still get great video quality out of it, but just remember you will lose some of those megapixels for the photo quality. That 16 millimeter will still give you a field of view of 24 millimeters as a full frame equivalent, but you bought this camera for full frame. So I would definitely make sure that you're buying full frame lenses. If we slide over to the next one, long exposure NR, I usually leave that off. Also high SO NR, I leave that off as well. Color space, I always set this to sRGB. Now, if you're gonna be posting things to Instagram, online through Facebook, things of that nature, you definitely want to go ahead and leave this on sRGB. You can always switch it to Adobe RGB, but I can tell you that sRGB is what most color spaces are using on the internet. I'll go ahead, link a video up in the description description above, go ahead and check that out afterwards. It's a Peter McKinnon video where he talks about the sRGB and why he was having so much trouble getting his colors to match up when he posted online. Lens compensation, I just leave this on auto so I don't really touch anything here. Drive mode, I like continuous shooting. Now there's multiple different options that you have. You have single shot, which is great if you're gonna lock things off on a tripod and your subject's not gonna move. So very good for product photography and things like that. You got something that's gonna move. I usually keep it on mid, but there's also low, high plus, high, and like I said, I usually leave it on medium. I don't really like to rip off as many photos as you possibly can. I like that medium. It gives you a little bit of variation in your shot. There is a two second delay. You can change it to 10 seconds, five. Usually I'll use this two second delay if I am shooting on a tripod at a very slow shutter speed. This way, when you press down the shutter button, you eliminate some of that shake. You can also fire off three shots at that two second interval, or you can do five at that two seconds. 10 second interview, you can do three shots or five images as well well. So there's a bunch of different combinations. Generally what I'll do is I'll do a two second for three images. And a lot of times I'll do that while I'm doing thumbnails or product photography. And this 
way when I hit that shutter button, it makes it more stable and then it will shoot off three different images. 99 times out of 100, those images are gonna come out completely fine for all three shots but I like to have the three shots just to be safe. Continuous bracketing, so you can always use that. Single bracketing, I, I almost never go into any of these. White balance low bracketing and then DRO bracketing. Like I said, I usually keep it 99% of the time in continuous shooting, unless like I said, I have it locked off on a tripod and I'm trying to do some of those type of those type of shots. Bracket settings, I usually just leave this as default, so, so just go ahead and move on to the next one. Interval shooting, that's a whole video onto itself. We don't wanna turn that on at this point. If you want me to make a dedicated video of what my memory settings are, go ahead, comment down below with memory settings. My focus mode, I usually keep this to AFC, continuous autofocus. There's single shot if you need to do a single shot or autofocus AF. I don't normally put it on this one. I usually go with the continuous autofocus or I'll go to manual focus. This DMF is also another type of manual focus. Usually I just go between manual focus and AFC. Priority set, autofocus C. I usually have that at balance emphasis along with AFC. I have that at balance as well. Focus here Areas. These are different focus areas. Generally, I have this set to widest. You also have different zones that you can pick. You can also do center if you want to really center up the shot. There's a spot focus where you can move your spot of where you want to focus. There's expanded spot focus. That's if you want to really get kind of like the other stuff going around it as well. So, and then there's also tracking expanded flex spotting. So that's another one that you can use. Most of the time I keep it in wide or center or even the zone. The zone's not a bad one too. If you're trying to get a shot of something that's really far away, that's where this flex spot can help you out. But I usually keep it on wide. Back into the menu, focus area limited. I usually turn all of these on. Switch between autofocus point and autofocus area. This is generally, I keep this on this setting right here. Moving on to AF limiter, I usually keep that off. Make sure that you go into face and eye detect and you go with human eye detect. You have the choice between human and animal. I usually always keep it on human because I'm usually recording humans. But if you're somebody who's got a cat or a dog, go ahead and do you. Um, usually I keep this on auto as far as which eye it's gonna pick. And I do want face and eye frame display turned on. Eye detect for animals. If you do have the animals on, you wanna make sure that you have this on as well so you can tell when you got the eye of your animal. Usually my autofocus tracking, I keep this at a standard of three. If you got a group of people and you wanna go ahead and lock on to one person, I would recommend do lock on, that's the one. But generally I keep it at a three and it works perfectly fine. Aperture drive and autofocus, I usually keep this one as standard. AF with shutter, um, this is where you can hold the button down halfway and it's gonna autofocus for you. I usually keep this to on. Although there is an autofocus back button that you can use on this camera. So I do like that, that's kind of nice. So sometimes that shutter button can be a little finicky when you're trying to push it down halfway. I do find that the AF on does work very well. Pre autofocus, absolutely. I always want this thing to autofocus prior to, to snapping off the picture. I start autofocus, I usually leave this to regular setting and autofocus area registration, leave that to off. Delete autofocus area, I, I usually always just leave that alone. So your focus frame color, I leave that to white. So you have a choice between white and red. I find white is a little bit easier for me, but hey, you do you. Find out which one works best for you and go ahead and use that one. All right, so autofocus area, auto clear, I usually leave that off. Also display, continuous autofocus area, I leave that on. Moving on to the next page, circulate of autofocus points, does not circulate. So you can do does not circulate or circulate. I usually keep this on, do not circulate. AF frame move amount, I usually leave that on standard. And then AF micro adjustment, I usually leave that to off. Onto the next page, exposure compensation. I usually leave this at zero. Do I wanna reset that? No. ISO settings, I usually have my ISO settings just set to the highest range possible. Is it gonna be grainy? For sure, but it gives you the maximum output possible. And I usually leave it on auto. Metering mode, I leave that on multiple. There's multiple different options that you can do. Normally I just leave that on multi. As far as face priority and multimetering, I leave this on. I wanna be able to find people's faces. That's the biggest thing when I'm recording video and shooting photos. Spot metering, I leave that at center. That seems to be the best for me, but you can do focus point link if you want, but I usually leave that on center. Exposure steps, I like to do this at 0.3. You have the 0.3 or 0.5. I usually like to leave this at 0.3. AEL with shutter, I leave that to auto and exposure 
standard adjustments. Just leave that alone, otherwise you'll get this warning right here. All right, so flash settings, usually flash mode, I leave that as fill flash. Flash compensation, I leave that at plus zero. Exposure compensation, I leave that at ambient and flash. Wireless flash, I have that off unless I'm shooting with a wireless flash, then I would turn it on. Red eye reduction, I usually leave that to off. And then external flash set, this is something that you can set up if you have an external flash. White balance, usually I set this to auto. Now, if you're shooting raw, this isn't gonna matter as much, but if you are shooting JPEG, you will wanna pick the proper white balance, which is either daylight, shade, cloudy, incandescent, and then there's a couple other ones that you can pick in here, including if you're shooting with a flash, you can shoot with the flash. Uh, like I said, um, most of the time I'm leaving this an auto white balance i am shooting raw so i just leave that as as auto priority set white balance you can set it to standard ambient or white i usually keep this set to standard auto hdr i leave that off creative styles you're shooting in raw so this doesn't necessarily matter but there are different styles that you can shoot in a lot of people like shooting in natural that kind of gives you kind of a flatter profile but usually i just leave it in standard picture effects this is gimmicky i don't usually use any of this stuff um, i usually just leave that to off picture profile when i'm shooting stills i do want this off i don't like uh, having any picture profile on i want it off i want to see what the colors are going to look like so normally i'll just leave this off Shutter auto white balance, continuous shooting. This is usually what I pick. So it will just naturally just keep auto focusing for me. You can do shutter halfway down if you want, or you can turn it off completely. I usually leave it at continuous shooting. Focus magnifier, just leave that alone. Also focus magnifying time, no limit on that. Initial focus magnifier, I like one time focus. You do have a five to nine that's gonna really zoom in, crop in. Every time you hold down on that shutter button, it's gonna zoom in, like it will grab somebody's face and it will zoom in on that. I usually just leave it one. So autofocus and focus magnifier, I usually leave that to on, along with manual focus assist, I leave that to on as well. Peaking settings, I'm gonna leave that on. I like it at a mid range level, but sometimes if I'm having trouble really seeing it, I will go to high. That's gonna give me a lot more focus color. And I usually keep it at red. So you got yellow, blue, white, but I usually keep it at red. Moving on to the next page, anti-flicker shooting. I usually leave this off. I'm not too worried about it. I'm usually using video lights. I'm not usually using something that's gonna flicker. Base registration, you can go ahead and register a whole bunch of people. You may wanna register yourself. If you're gonna be using this as a vlogging camera, you can go ahead and register yourself. What that will do is as you're in a crowd of people, it's going to try and lock onto your face first. Register faces is priority. We want to leave that on as well. So if we're going to register our face, we want to make sure that we keep our priority on. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Brian, the camera guy. If you're new to the channel, I review Sony cameras and give you tips and tricks on how to get better image quality from your camera. If that's something you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss out any of my future videos. So now what I want you to do is switch over to that video dial. This is going to be mostly video stuff. So let's go ahead and switch over to that video dial. All right, so now here, what we want to do is we want to set our exposure to manual. This is where if you want to take a full advantage of the camera, you want to be in manual mode. You can also set it to shutter priority, aperture priority, or just program audio. My recommendation is stick with the manual exposure. That's going to give you the best options. You can control everything, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. I would recommend sticking in the manual exposure. And generally, I do shoot my talking head videos in 4K. Unfortunately, with the Atomos Ninja recorder that I am using, I do have to shoot in 1080p in order to record this screen share. Normally, you're gonna wanna pick XAVCS 4K. But like I said, right now I'm in 1080p. Now, generally, what I'll do is I will set my frame rate to 24 frames per second. If you wanna do 30 frames, definitely feel free to do 30 frames. 30 frames is gonna look a little bit more like a soap opera, where 24 frames is gonna look a little bit more like a movie. If you wanted me to do a slow motion tutorial for this camera, go ahead and leave the comment down below stating slow motion. I'm going to go ahead and pick 24 frames per second at the 50, but if you're on the 4K, it's going to say 24 frames per second at either 60 or 100. S in quick mode, this is another option where it will do slow motion for you automatically. That is, again, something that I could cover in a future video if you are looking for slow motion settings. Proxy recording, I keep that off. I did do a previous video where I talked about turning this on 
on for your Sony camera. The downside is, is that you lose face detect. So I recommend keeping that off. You wanna make sure that you have face detect. You're buying a Sony camera. It's got great autofocus. You wanna definitely be taking advantage of that autofocus. AF transition speed. This is your autofocus transition speed. Generally, I have this set at either four or five. I think it comes defaulted as five. I just kept it at five. As far as subject shift sensitivity goes, I leave that at five. I want that very responsive, but you can also change it to three. Three is gonna be your standard, uh, but I have it set to five. I want it very responsive. I wanna be able to, to track my subject whenever possible. Auto slow shutter, just leave that at on. Initial focus magnification. Once again, I'm gonna leave that at one times. Audio recording, of course you want that on. You're gonna be recording video. Why wouldn't you wanna have your audio recording on? Go ahead and leave that on. You wanna be able to set your levels and see how they look. As you can see on the screen, I do have audio levels happening right now. You wanna display those levels on your screen as well. So as you can see, I am displaying my levels right now on the screen. It's the easiest way to make sure that your audio levels are being recorded. Now, audio out timing, I usually leave this on live, but you, if you are doing something else, you do have the ability to do lip sync, but I leave this on live. If you are looking for me to do a video on how to set up your Atomos Ninja so that you can figure out how many frames delay there is between your camera and the Ninja, go ahead, comment down below ninja audio settings and i'll go ahead and be sure to make that video so next wind noise reduction you want to keep that off last thing you want to do is turn that on thing on it's going to make you sound muffled it's going to make you sound like you're under water you don't want any of that so make sure you keep that off marker display you can go ahead and turn this on or off i usually leave it off your marker displays this is going to be where it's going to give you white bars on the top and the bottom you can do different aspect ratios to make sure that you are staying in the safe zone for my 24p i leave this off for my slow motion i usually turn this on because a lot of times you want a little bit more of a wider stretched out cinematic look for uh, 24 frames leave this off grid frame leave that off as well in your 24p video light mode i usually leave this at power length don't know much about it i just leave it at i just leave it at power length movie with shutter i always keep this on so if you're in video mode you can hit the shutter button and it's going to start recording now the a7c does have a conveniently placed record button you can always custom change that button to be a different feature i've just left it as record i've become accustomed to the movie with shutter being on so i leave that on definitely makes it easier when you're in front of the camera to find that button it's the biggest button in the front of the camera it's hard to miss silent shooting i usually leave this off unless i absolutely have to i'm not out shooting press events or anything like that so usually keeping it off is not a problem release without lens enabled so this is basically you can take off the lens while the camera's still on pros and cons to this i usually leave it on you can also do release without a card leave that enabled steady shot i like to leave that on so that's good steady shot adjustment I usually leave that auto. Zoom, you can do clear image zoom. This is where you can magnify things at 1.5 times in 4K and two times in 1080p. Definitely wanna use that. I do like using clear image zoom. That is going to allow you to punch in one and a half times very quickly. And then if you throw on, if you throw on the zoom setting, you can get even further. Theoretically, you can get up to maybe three and a half times zoom. So normally I keep this and clear image zoom. If you want on a different video, I can give you all my custom buttons. As you can see, I can zoom in and out with a clear image zoom that gives me the one and a half times magnification. And when you're in 4K, you apparently don't lose any image quality and it's pretty accurate. That basically punches you into APS-C mode. The display button, uh, you can leave this to monitor or finder. I usually just leave this the way it is. As far as the monitor viewfinder, leave that on auto. Now, if you're somebody who uses your left hand to, to do focus tracking, some Sometimes you'll, your screen will turn off, but I usually just leave it on auto, let the camera know when my eye comes up to the viewfinder, it's gonna turn off. Usually for finder frame rate, I leave this on standard. Zebra settings, you can either turn these on or off. Usually in still mode, I keep them off. In video mode, I turn them on. I usually have a custom. When I'm in video, I usually have it at, I have it 105 plus. That's going to let me know that at 105%, it's gonna start clipping. Usually though, in video mode, I do keep this on, but in still mode, usually I keep that off. 
I do like the rule of thirds, so usually I'll keep the rule of thirds on. You can do square grid, diagonal and square or off. I usually like rules of thirds. That helps frame up my shot a little bit better. Exposure set guide, I usually leave that to on. Live view display, usually leave that where it is. Continuous shoot length, not displayed. And auto review, I keep that at off. Custom keys, this is a whole separate video onto itself. I'll just run through if you wanna take a quick screen grab. So go ahead and pause the video now and you can go ahead and copy my settings if you like. And this is the custom keys when you're in video. Again, if you wanna pause the video, you can pause the video now and copy my settings. Use your custom key while you're doing playback. You can instantly send to a phone. This is gonna work really well if you're shooting JPEGs. All right, function set menu. Once again, if you wanna go ahead and copy my settings, feel free to pause the video now. You have two different function menus. One is for still photos, that's gonna be your top menu, and you're gonna have one for video, that's gonna be your bottom menu. Your, I do like the function menu. I love being able to, to turn things on and off quickly. That's that FM button. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to. Go ahead and copy my, my video settings. My dial settings, usually I keep the dial set to ISO for the control wheel. That's really the only change I I make here and i do like to have it tv and av i like using that wheel up at the top to control my aperture and i like the control pad to control my shutter speed i find myself changing the aperture a lot more than i change the shutter speed especially because i'm primarily a video shooter having that right up at the top seems to make a lot more sense for me but if you want to switch that so the dials are the opposite you would pick av and then tv so av tv rotate you can leave this normal or you can reverse it it. I like to keep it normal. When you scroll to the right, it will increase. And when you scroll to the left, it will decrease. Dial wheel exposure comp, leave that off. Function of touch operation. Now you can't see it right now because I am doing the screen recording, but you do want to set this to touch tracking. That's going to allow you to track your subject by just tapping on the screen. Dial and wheel lock, leave that unlocked. Auto signal, leave that on. Now we're in the networking. Send a smartphone function, so proxy only. I don't normally touch this. None of these I've really touched except for the PC remote function. You can keep that off or you can attach it to a USB-C. Airplane mode, keep that off. Wi-Fi, I don't really touch anything in this menu. Same thing with this menu. I don't really touch anything here as well. Although I do, although I will edit my device name, you can change your device name. This will help you in Wi-Fi. But I don't touch anything else here. You can also just reset your settings if you screw something up. Playback, don't touch anything in these menus. So we'll just skip ahead. I just leave those standard. Monitor brightness, this is something that I'll show you a little bit later in the video as one of my, my menus. I do have this set where I can quickly jump in and change this. Viewfinder brightness, same deal. I usually leave that alone. Finder color temp, leave that alone as well. Gamma assist display, you can turn this on if you are gonna be shooting in one of the log formats. Keep it off if you are gonna be shooting in something different. Volume settings, I usually keep this at a standard of 15 and then I'll adjust as the mic level indicates. Now remember, if you are recording video, you do wanna keep at a negative 12 decibel. I always wanna confirm before I delete, so I don't wanna just delete straight off the bat. So if I ever do record something, I wanna make sure that I definitely do not delete until I confirm. Display quality, I leave this as standard. Standard. Power save time, I usually have this set to five minutes. I do find that the battery lasts pretty long, so I've never had a problem with that. Auto power off temp, I usually turn this to high. This is gonna allow the camera to really heat up. I've never had it actually shut off for overheating. Now, NTSC and PALS, now if you're in North America, you wanna use the NTSC. If you're in other parts of the world, definitely check to see what setting you should use. Now, if you use NTSC, that's gonna give you 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. If you use PALS, you're going to get 25 frames a second, 50 and 100. This basically has everything to do with lighting. So if you're going to be shooting in household lights, you want to make sure you have the proper setting here. 99 times out of 100, if you're in America or Canada, you're going to want NTSC. Cleaning mode. If you go ahead and do this, this is going to shake the sensor and try and get that dust off. Touch operation, leave that to on. Touch panel and pad. I usually have this at touch panel and pad. Touch pad settings. Here's my settings right here. Leave it on, relative position, and right in a half. TCU USB setting, I just leave this how it comes. HDMI settings, here's my settings right here. Normally I have it to auto, 24 frames. HDMI info display is currently on because I am screen recording. Usually I'll keep the, the TC output off, but for this video I'm keeping it on. And then record control, keep that off. Usually once you turn this TC output off, this will 
gray out. And then controlling with HDMI, I usually keep that on. 4K, you can do both. You can record to memory card and HDMI. If you find that your camera is a little finicky when you're displaying out to a video screen, make sure you turn this to either 30 or 24 frames. Sometimes that will disable face detect, but I'm happy to report with my Sony a7C, I haven't had that issue. So go ahead and just leave a memory card and HDMI. Usually I always keep this as mass storage. USB connection is mass storage. I don't really change anything with this, except for obviously date and time, language, that type of stuff. Don't really change much with this. Now here's where you're formatting. So if you need to format your SD card, this is the spot you want to go. You can select a record folder so you can rename your files any way that you want. If you want to create a new folder, you can do that. Here's where you can change the name of your files. I like to keep it series A7C because that's the camera I'm using and the file name standard. So file settings, you can also change the series count so you can reset the counter or you can keep it standard. You can always change the title of the name settings. I have mine set to the A7C. Other than that, I leave everything else pretty much standard here. This version is where you can check to see what version of the camera you're on. Currently, there is no firmware update, so you're at version one. And the lens that I have, the 20 millimeter F1.8 is currently on version one. So if you wanna reset everything, here's where you go, setting reset. Now, remember my my menu, this is a spot where I told you I put a lot of my customizable functions. So I use my memory recall here. Again, if you want me to do a designated video on memory recall, go ahead and leave a comment down below. My zebra settings, like I said, usually I keep these on and I keep them at uh, 105 plus. Monitor brightness, this allows you to change the monitor brightness. I usually keep it here in my menu to keep it nice and simple. The gamma display, you can turn this on to auto. S-Log, HLG. Normally I keep that off unless I'm really out there and I'm, I'm not really sure about my exposure. Aspect ratio, usually like I said, keep that at 3.2. Here's my HDMI settings again. And then I got my face slash eye autofocus selection. Now, one of the things I didn't cover is when I am shooting video, I will turn on a picture profile. I'm actually gonna go to it right now through my function menu. So it is one of my function settings. I do have my picture profile PP10 and how I have that set up. Basically I have that set up with no changes except for the HLG3. I have the BT2020 color space. And then for detail, I do have it at negative seven. This is generally the way that I will shoot is in the PP10 when I am shooting video. Um, Gerald Undone did a video on this. I'll go ahead and link that up in the cards above. Those leaming lots are really Really nice and they they instantly turn your footage into rec 709 and make color grading a snap they have s log 2 and 3 and also hlg hlg 3 so generally i am shooting with hlg 3. i'm going to turn my picture profile to off again because i am in my standard mode now normally i will set my picture profile and then i'll save it to a memory recall button. You can do that at your own leisure. So there you have it. Those are my settings for my Sony a7C. If you want more in-depth videos, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what you need more videos on and I'll be more than happy to do videos specifically on that. If you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna like the video on the screen now. It's another tip about the Sony a7C. Go ahead and click on that video and I'll see you on that video next. Before you leave, make sure you like, subscribe and ring the bell. Brian out.